welcome to this video explaining Confluence spaces. This is an important topic to understand as you're using Confluence because it represents another way to organize your information. We're going to start off diagramming it so I can explain the concept and then we're going to pop over to Confluence so you can see it in practice. When we think through our page structures, we tend to think of something like a welcome page or a top level page and then a few children. And these pages relate to each other, so I'll connect them with arrows, and I'll give them names. So in this example, I might be on the HR team, and I have a welcome to HR at the top, and then under that FAQ, meet the team in policies. Now, all of these pages relate to each other, but they also exist in something called a space. Now, I think of a space essentially as a bucket of related pages, blog posts, and other things. This space is, exists in Confluence and contains all the pages within it. And Confluence can contain multiple spaces. So my HR team might have a space, but so might IT and maybe marketing. And maybe my R&D team has their own space. Each team might have a space, but a project might also have a space. So if I have a new project to open a new office, that space may be created and only information about that new office would show up there. This is another way to logically organize my content to ensure only HR-related stuff is in the HR space, only R&D stuff in the R&D space, etc. Now, there's a few advantages here. The first is my users know what's in each space. They know when they go to the marketing space, just marketing stuff will be in there. I can also do things like control access. So I might only allow people on the R&D team to open pages in the R&D space. So I don't have to worry about locking down individual pages. Instead, I just restrict access to the entire space. Confluence doesn't have a limit on spaces, so they're a great way to organize content. Now that we understand a little bit more about these bigger buckets called spaces, let's pop over to Confluence and we'll see what they look like. Here we have my Confluence home, and over on the right, I see a list of all spaces. There is also a menu at the top where I can view spaces or create a new one if I have permissions. But here I have two spaces, IT support, and my own personal space that everyone gets called Robert Heen. So if I open up IT support, this has a list of pages underneath it that are unique to the space. This team could build this space out and include whatever information they want, and also do something like restrict access so only their team can see it. I can also pop over to my personal space that I might have blog posts or one-on-one -on -one notes or meeting notes, things like that, that are important to me, but maybe not other people. And by putting that in my own space, I clearly signal to others that, hey, this is stuff important just to Rob. You can check it out, but maybe you don't care too much about it. Just like we can favorite or watch pages, we can also star and unstar spaces. So again, spaces are basically just a bucket to put pages into that you can then do things like control access to and another way to organize your content. It does require you to think at a bit higher level and to see how you want to strategize to do this, but they're a wonderful way to sort things out. Thank you for taking time to learn a little bit more about Confluence Spaces, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in another video soon.